clip here, courtesy of my favorite YouTube account out there. So make sure you're following this YouTube account. It is the Cambodian River Pig. And this is a clip of Sam Tripoli attacking the Trash Tuesday girls. And I guess this is regarding the whole Brendan Shawgate affair, which I'm completely bored of. But we're going to just analyse it because Sam Tripoli decided to poke his head out of the parapet and lend his two pence. And again, I'm just going to go out here and say flat out that I'm a fan of Sam Tripoli just because he was one of the only people within that LA podcast scene who clearly... I don't think maybe gets the respect he deserves on podcasts. Maybe behind the scenes he does because for all accounts he does a show that he puts on where he has loads of stand-up comedians on and stuff. But he doesn't seem like the cool guy in that crew, in that circle of people. But for whatever reason, he was the only one who was willing to be upfront and public, right? That he was defending the likes of Brian Callan and Chris D'Elia in public. And he was willing to kind of risk his career. Now, again, it's not like he's got a big, glitzy Hollywood career. But still, you know, he's still affecting his ability to put food on the table and to look after his family if he's going to go out there and defend people who have been accused of rape and, you know, hooking up with underage girls. So the fact that he did it and was such a friend to those guys in those peak circumstances goes a long way with me. Um, but again, as human beings are, we're fallible. Sometimes we're good, sometimes we're bad. So I guess this is... um. Um, this is a part of it. Oh, and there's another clip here. Confirmed he's not a friend of... Oh, no. Okay, cool. Let's continue. But this is him attacking trash users and girls, and we're going to analyse it and go through. Again, apologise if I stop it too often, but if you want to watch it yourself, you can. That's what the title of the video is, and you can check it out yourself if you want. But let's go. This is the worst Me Too I've ever seen in my life because nothing happened. Well, she even said... It's not a cancelable offense, is what she called Nothing it Nothing in it was a cancelable offense, and I tell you exactly what happened. These girls are smart enough to know exactly what you talked about, which was that there was a giant community that didn't like Shab, and you could get them to love your fucking show by getting in the mix of it. Okay? Yeah. And Annie Letterman is super funny, but walk me to my car so I could suck your dick is literally nothing. It is, it is nothing, nothing happened. And I love her to pieces, but it's like, when Kalila's like, it's just girl jokes, girl talk. It's not. Has Sam Tripoli not been around women? He's got kids, right? So I'm sure he's been around women before. Has, is he not familiar with women gossiping? Is he not familiar with women talking out of turn about people, especially men who have maybe done them wrong in the past life? If he's not familiar with women in general talking bad about anyone, the fact that this is like a new thing or something that he thinks like shouldn't be said by a group of women is absolutely insane. Legitimately insane. And like I mentioned beforehand in another show, <clears throat> if you're a guy and you decide to throw your shot at somebody, you decide, sorry, does it throw your shot? Yeah, it decides to throw your shot. Um, they, you don't have control of the story anymore. You both kind of entered into like a, um, a silent agreement that you've kind of shared this occasion together. And if that person decides to out you or decides to just tell a funny story about you being a terrible date or you maybe having a terrible pickup line, you just have to take it. You don't have the authority to say, no, you can't say anything because no, you entered, you basically gave him the right to say it by basically, you know, propositioning them whatever you proposition. No one's saying you can't go up to somebody and say, walk me to my truck, do what you please. Even if you've got a wife, even if you've got seven kids, 17 baby mothers, do whatever the hell you want. But that person also has a right to say whatever they want about the interaction. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. The only slight thing you could say that might be slightly wrong, you can criticize them about it, is maybe Kalila. Because Kalila's with obviously Bobby Lee. And Bobby Lee's always been somebody that's very worried and um, really anxious about how he's viewed in the comedy scene. And he's clearly somebody who um, is afraid of confrontation. He's clearly somebody who feels like maybe he gets bullied and intimidated by all the other kind of jockey kind of comedians out there and bloody blah, blah, blah. blah. So maybe if, you've, if you're dating someone like that, you should be a bit sensitive about how you talk about his, his peers because you don't want it to affect him in his kind of real life when he goes to the stores and the comedy store. It's not that big of a deal, but you know I mean, if, if there's one criticism you could say, it maybe Kalila maybe should have been more attentive or aware of how it could affect Bobby Lee. But still, it doesn't matter. Some women on a podcast talking about how a shitty dude tried to hook up with the both of them, it's still what it says on the tin. It's more about the shitty dude. It's not about the women that spread the story. 
that's the insane thing that I don't understand. And again, there's something so unhinged about all these men in the LA comedy scene falling over themselves to try and defend Brendan Shaw with this crazy thing that happened. Again, some minor things, not that even big of a deal really, but defending something like this shows how weird that scene is because it's only because he's he's connected to Joe Rogan. If this was some random dude, they would be laying into him. But because he's connected to Joe Rogan, they want to keep that connection sweet. So they're trying to bend the rules. They're trying to uh, twist their backs. They're trying to make any kind of weird argument they can to make it make sense. But it doesn't make sense. He did a shitty thing. The girls called out on the podcast in a funny way. If he was smart, he would have just pretended it didn't happen and he would have been able to continue on drug walking people from all over the country. But he decided to try to engage, to try to fight it, to try and make up that weird redacted story about Bobby Lee starting the flipping fighting a kid subreddit it, and it turned into an absolute shit show. It's not really that big of a deal, but all of this is so weird, the defending of it. It's just bizarre. It's like, why even get involved? It's not that big of a deal, just move on, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, Sam. What are you doing, brother? Yeah, if it was, you wouldn't be here. What should have happened, in my humble opinion, is that Kyle should have gone, dude, it was a joke, and it's gone too far, and I'm sorry. That's how it should have ended. That's how it should What? <laughs> Do you know how that insane that sounds? Do you know how insane that sounds? A married man should get apologized for, for what? Because... The other lady dared to bring it up. <laughs> what? To end it. Shab is either too nice or too slow to be in. He went to that Bobby Lee podcast with Kalila. With a, he went to a gunfight with a spork. Okay, dude. She. I mean, she was like an attorney. The way she but walked through that. Not her, everything her she said was accurate. It doesn't matter. After it doesn't one, matter, but it wasn't accurate. I mean, she shredded him, I, honestly. I'm just going to tell everybody something about this 300 pages. Okay? I've talked to a bunch of people. All I'm going to tell you. what you're talking about, though. It's, 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 so it's, there's 300 yeah. pages of evidence is that. And I love Sam Tripoli, but the conspiracy, if, if he's going to get involved in these 300 pages and tell us that they exist, I'm going to blow a gasket. Oh, my God. So that theory I had, again, I had a theory that the 300 pages that Brendan was supplied with was real. But I have the theory that the person that supplied it to him basically scammed him and conned him into believing that they were, they, they were anything. Because he's so redacted and because he was such in a frenzy to find anything to sort of distract away from what was going on with the drug war thing and the Kyla thing, he just latched onto it. But the 300 pages don't prove anything. It's just, you know, um, HTML source code from a fucking public website. Do you know what I mean? It's just flipping right-click, view page source or whatever, inspect element. But it does exist, but he just got fleeced in the same way he got fleeced with those cats that he's meant to buy, those uh, anti-allergic -aller cats, whatever. But if Sam Tripoli's endorsing these flipping 300 pages, this is a bad sign. And they've discussed it that a bunch of the stuff on the subreddit of Tim of the Fire the Kid came from an IP address. Well, you're saying IP addresses, but all that I've seen Shab mention is that they that it was linked to somebody with an email that was a, at Tigerbelly whatever their URL is, their domain. That's all he said on the record. I thought it was talked about an IP address. I've I, heard I, IP maybe address. I'm, maybe I'm maybe it, I'm but. wrong too, which is fine because he can't. You know what's redacted. Both scenarios don't even matter. Even if there is an account with the with the Tiger Belly user with the Tiger Belly email address that only Tiger Belly staff would know, posting on the flipping Brenda Shop subreddit or the Fire the Kids subreddit, what does it matter to the allegations that were laid on that podcast? What does it matter to what Kalila and flipping Annie Liederman said? What does it actually matter to the whole thing? Is it, like it's the stretch from going from. There's one account on that subreddit posting disparaging stuff about Brendan to saying somehow that one account is responsible for all the thousands of accounts on there. 70,000 plus people on that, on that subreddit. Not one person can influence them. Trust me, subreddits don't work that way. Mods can maybe sometimes kill subreddits, but for the most part, one person can't make everyone speak a certain way about somebody. It doesn't happen that way. 
So this mental gymnastics they're all doing to protect them from the clear reality of there is a large group of people on the internet who don't like Brendan and go after him every single day on that subreddit and highlight all his faux pas. And because he's redacted, he feeds into it and gives them constant material because those guys don't create nothing out of thin air. They see stuff in real time, clip it, laugh at it and continue about their day. But these guys are bending over themselves to make it seem as if it's some like weird big conspiracy, as if he's flipping, I don't know, Trevor Noah or some shit. It's just Brendan Shaw, brother. Fuck me, this is so insane. Kept asking them during that podcast, is it possible for someone to create a Reddit account with an email address at tigerbelly.com without... Here's all I'm going to say about the 300 pages based on people I've talked to. Yeah. The people that found the 300 pages. What are the pages? Why is it 300 pages? Is it just that account and everything they posted, you think? And what? like, yeah. Okay. I, I got, I haven't looked at the 300 pages. So why are you saying, yeah, and you say you haven't looked at it? So these guys, they're, <laughs> they're so pussy. If you're going to, if you're going to defend Brendan, die on that hill. I've seen the 300 pages from what I've seen and what I've been able to deduce. That's legit. It's real. Kalala's a lying bitch. And lead them into cloud chasing whore. Come out and die on that hill. Don't pussyfoot around the oh the, the pages that I've not seen yet. I've seen it. It, it, it. Like they are such pussies. And again, this is the funny thing about it. It took three women to come out and say something semi truthful, semi funny, whatever you want to paint it out to be, before other comedians felt it, it to be safe enough to come out and say something funny or insulting about Brendan's stand up special, about his comedy in general, not even about him as a person. It took three women, maybe two, you'd say, because maybe Esther wasn't really involved in terms of saying anything about Brendan. But these still women, in terms of a collective, it took them coming out saying something before suddenly the male comedians got any courage to just take take the piss out of Brendan's comedy. Not say anything about his personal life, not talk about some of these retracted point of views, just to take the piss out of his comedy. It took three women standing up. And now this guy's going out of his way to protect his master to protect somebody that clearly he feels like has some sort of monetary... Because that's the only thing that can explain it to me. Nothing else would make me want to jump out of a window for another man in this way if it didn't involve money. And even then, I still wouldn't do it. Like, you're a grown-up. Like, defend yourself, bruv. And if you did something fucked up, I'll tell you you fucked up. It's not that big of a deal. Just say sorry and move on. I'm just telling you this what I've like, heard. This is like Clinton documents or something. But else. listen to me. What I've been told is that report. the people who got these documents do not like being called a liar. Okay. So, Which, who, so who are they? Are they the fucking CIA? Is that what you're fucking saying, mate? Who, who, who did you get involved here? Who's involved here? NCIA, who's involved here? Please tell me. Who? Is it the Met? Is it the police force here in the, in the United Kingdom? MI5? Is it our secret service? Come on. Jesus Christ, these people, man. Which makes me think that people think there's rules of this shit and that people are following rules. And that's all I'm going to say about it. I don't, what do you mean by that? That's all I'm going to say about it. Whoa. It doesn't sound like they, uh, okay. Yeah, it does, I, 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 rules, I, I wonder there's how they There's rules got these and then there's people who work outside the rules. That's what I'm trying to say. All and right. this is based on just energy, bro. What does that even mean? Is he trying to suggest that maybe the people that got the evidence got it outside of normal methods and if they reveal it, it's going to show their methods and it might maybe compromise them? I don't know. You're just I'm trying to make sense out of a flipping Looney Tune. That part is just energy. But all I'm going to say is I love Bobby Lee. I have none but respect for Kalila. Annie Letterman is my friend. I... D this needs to stop. They keep doing shows on it, right? I mean, they did another show on it, and it's just did, like have they done another one now, really. Yeah, <laughs> so fun. It's just like they're it's, doing Mondo numbers. I'm sure that's yeah. what it's. And this is my problem: is like this is where comedy's going. It's becoming reality show. It's a reality show. Aren't you doing the same thing though? I contribute to it by making up these nonsense claims. If anything, and that's your friend. You just won't talk about it so that the tension goes away from it because you're somebody of promise. You're, you're somebody of some level of prominence, right? I'm a nobody. I'm commentating on what you're saying because you're 
related to them when they show up in some way, shape or form. You're in that sphere. You live over there. You're part of that community. So if you say something, then I will react to what you say. But if you don't say anything, I've got nothing to react off of. And guess what? The news cycle moves on. But these people are so quick and so ready to jump on and defend. Because, again, this is why I've always said from the outset. I think if you're a stand-up comedian and you move to L.A., or especially beforehand, I think you really owed it to yourself to try your hardest, your absolute darndest, to try to get into Joe Rogan's good graces. Forget trying to get an agent. Forget trying to get a manager. Forget trying to get a pass at the comedy store. Forget trying to get a Netflix special. Just try to be Joe Rogan's friend. Try your best to make Joe Rogan laugh. Try to be your best to be a person that he maybe um, confides in. Somebody he wants to, he doesn't mind hanging out with after the comedy store in the car park. All that stuff. L legitimately do that. And your career will be Gucci. Brennan Schaub's a good example of it. The guy, by all accounts, again, we don't know him. I don't know him personally. But from what he's presented online, he's not a very likable person. Pretty much a quite un unlikable kind of guy. But despite being a very unlikable person, he has been gifted the keys to the flipping mansion. He's been gifted a career on a silver platter. And he's also been gifted the ability to basically do and say what he wants because of his connection to flipping Joe Rogan. It just allows him, you know, to basically run amok and to do what he wants without little to no consequences. Because imagine if this was anybody else. Look at how they reacted to flipping Carlos Mencia, stealing some jokes. And again, he, what he did was awful. His, his appearance on Tiger Belly was one of the worst podcast episodes I've ever seen in my entire life. It was legitimately hard to listen um, to him basically take no accountability and be a, a raging narcissist. But all he did was steal some jokes. Did he take some money out of people's pockets? Probably. But he just stole some jokes. He didn't try to hook up with other people's wives, right? He didn't downplay people's achievements. He didn't say crazy things about people when they passed. Like that clip I played with Norm MacDonald where he suggests that he was a degenerate gambler in the wake of his flipping death. He's not even flipping cold and he's already saying this on the podcast. Like clearly demonstrably awful things. He didn't do that. He just stole a few jokes. And what? And the whole community completely ostracized Carlos Mencia. Because why? He wasn't Joe Rogan's friend. So if you want to be an entertainer in that scene, being Joe Rogan's friend and having him pick you and choose you as your as somebody that people should care about, it can really protect you in a long way. It can basically help your career, like in ways that you've probably never, ever imagined. It's absolutely mad, isn't it? But hey, what can you do, man? What can you do? Hey, what's the chat saying here? The chat, what are you saying in the chat? The chat's going off. People are arguing. Are people arguing in the chat? <laughs> Um, what are people saying in the chat? Uh, Pavilion. Um, what are people saying in the chat? Issues of Torogan, skill set in that. If it bleeds, it leads, says Ciara Lowry. Jay Santos says, How's that bar bartender thing going for you, Big Bear? Stop listening to him two years ago. I'm sure it's that. What are you talking about? Sam is wild B, Triple A. But yeah. Are people like are people like cool? <laughs> oh, but anyway, big up the chat regardless, man. You guys are on it, so big up everyone that's tuned in. Again, as per usual, if it's your first time checking out the stream, you like what you hear, you like what you're listening to, please make sure that you're liking the stream and you're giving me all that love on there, so to boost the algorithm and all that good stuff. And of course, if you like and enjoy what you hear throughout, and you want to check back. And, you know, check out some other parts of the show that I do on my own channel. Then make sure you subscribe. That will be greatly appreciated too. 